Previously, in Unit 1 of QCE Psychology, we saw that neurons are the basic unit of the nervous system and there are three types that work together to send messages, like when this floating eyeball wants a drink. And this diagram makes it look easy, but in reality, the brain alone has over a hundred billion neurons, so that's a lot of signaling happening. It's a lot like a microchip, right, with tiny processes and wires all over the place connecting things to each other. And indeed, the way signals pass through neurons can be described as electrical, using positive and negative charges. This process is called the action potential, and it's extraordinarily elegant and complex. In short, it involves a rapid electrical impulse, almost like an explosion occurring at one end that triggers the next section to activate and so on until the signal reaches the other end of the neuron. It's a cascade, very much like dominoes falling. But we're gonna focus on what happens at the very end because it turns out each neuron in the brain may be connected to up to 10,000 other neurons. I know, we call these connections between neurons synapses. So we're talking up to a quadrillion synapses in the brain. That's one with 12 zeros. And even crazier, in the middle of each synapse is a complete gap. Turns out, unlike electrical wires, neurons in the body aren't actually physically connected to each other. Discovering how signal transmission occurred across the synapse was one of the most exciting and revealing things in brain science and psychology. It's no exaggeration to say that it fundamentally changed neuropsychology. Discovering how signal transmission occurred across the synapse was one of the most exciting and revealing things in brain science. It's no exaggeration to say that it fundamentally changed neuropsychology. So let's get to know it. First, here are some key terms we'll be using for your notes. Okay, because synaptic transmission is a process, it's best understood with an animation. So when the action potential reaches the axon terminal, the end of the neuron, what it does is that it activates a release of chemicals from storage sacs known as vesicles. These chemicals flood into the synaptic cleft, aka the gap, and diffuse their way across to the next neuron. So we call the previous neuron the presynaptic one, and this next one the postsynaptic cell. And because these chemicals transmit a message, they're called neurotransmitters. They're picked up by the postsynaptic neuron when they activate many tiny receptors designed for that very purpose. And if enough are activated, an action potential begins in the next neuron. And so the message is passed on. Interestingly, sometimes the receptors cause an action potential to stop happening because that's the message that needed to be passed on. And then these neurotransmitters usually get recycled back into the presynaptic cell to get used again another time. Now that's all well and good, but how would we achieve this video's objective to communicate that using a diagram. Well, a quick Google search will show you that there are so many diagrams that are all correct, but with different levels of detail. This one, for example, gives a really nice sense of the scale of what's happening. This one labels the entire neuron and then focuses on just what's happening here in the synapse. But I think this one is the simplest of all, and it still effectively communicates neurotransmission. And of course, it won't hurt at all to practice drawing this into your notes. So firstly, you wanna make sure that you have your presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron. In this diagram, they're just called cells, which I actually prefer because sometimes either of these two cells aren't actually a neuron. Either way, we have our neurotransmitters being released from these sacs inside the presynaptic cell. They cross the gap and they activate receptors on the postsynaptic cell, passing on whatever message they're supposed to. And if you got all that in your diagram, good job you've communicated neurotransmission. And like I said before, sometimes the message for this postsynaptic cell is that it should start an action potential. So we would say that this neuron has been excited, but sometimes the message is to stop or prevent an action potential from happening. So we would say that this postsynaptic cell has now been inhibited. If you're wondering how you can have different outcomes when receptors get activated, well, it's complicated, but part of it has to do with which neurotransmitters get released across the gap. For example, check these two lovely molecules out. The guy on the top is glutamate, and below is GABA. You do not want to know what it stands for. Okay, fine, you asked. It's gamma amino butyric acid. Yup. Let's just call it GABA. So what do these guys do? Well, whenever glutamate is released in the brain, it pretty much always excites the next cell. That is, it's likely to start an action potential in the postsynaptic neuron. Glutamate pathways in the brain are really important when it comes to learning and memory. On the other hand, GABA is the brain's primary inhibitory neurotransmitter. Releasing it across the synapse will make the next neuron less likely to start an action potential. And this is shown to be important in the way our brain regulates anxiety. Once again, excitatory increases, more likely to start an action potential, and inhibitory, 
decreases, less likely to start an extra potential. And that's just an overview of how neurotransmission works in the nervous system. It's pretty incredible, and it happened probably trillions of times while you were just watching this video. All right, see you in the next one.